in this video I'll be looking at and comparing these two LEGO Harry Potter sets in front of me. These are 2020 Diagon Alley and 2018 Microscale Hogwarts. I'm comparing these because A, they're the only two LEGO Harry Potter D2Cs and they are very similar price points. I'll be briefly going through each set. It won't be a detailed review or anything. I'll try and do it very fast since they're big sets. But just to refresh them so you're completely caught up. And I'll be looking at the categories. Minifigures. Playability. Displayability. Storage. Exterior and interior. Now I must apologise if you hear a fan throughout this video. It's because it's quite hot in my room right now. But let's dive straight in. Oh, actually, before we do that, I forgot to mention, I will be showing the Silencio uh, secret minifigures from Diagon Alley. If somehow you've managed to avoid that, I will be showing them, so, you know, I'm sure everybody knows, but just in case you don't. Again, if you want to see a really detailed look at these sets, I recommend going on YouTube and searching for a review of them. But I'm just going to quickly go through the interior here, so you're completely caught up. If you haven't seen the exterior, uh, this isn't like perfect view since it's such a giant set and so awkward to film. Uh, you can easily look at pictures or again look at review, but I'll just briefly take you through the inside. Oh, and real quick, actually before I uh, take you through the interior, it is important to mention that these sets can come apart like uh, so, just so it's easier to move. So, jumping straight into the inside, underneath the Great Hall, we've got a Chamber of Secrets here, just zooming out a little bit so you can see where we are. Chamber of Secrets look very nice, uh, just in the guinea piece. Next to that, we've got the entrance to the Chamber of Secrets, so that's just a sticker, cannot open. Room with the wing keys, the keys are just stickers, and there's a very nice part usage for the broom. When you do take the uh, set uh, part into two modules, you can see there is actually a devil snare room here. It's just three rind pieces, but it's a nice inclusion. Next up is the chest room. And the instructions they say they've halved it, but they've actually more than halved it. And next over is the mirror of Erised room. Quite nice. And just for context, we are underneath the stone bridge right now, just so you know where we are. And these two next rooms are quite dark, so I've just turned the flash on my phone on. You can see this is the um, Snape's dungeon. I don't know why I said the, but it is. Looks very nice. Room of Requirement from the Half Blood Prince slash Deathly Hollows looks really good too. I really like that vanishing cabinet. Moving a level up, we are in the Viaduct entranceway right now. You can see we've got the library. This looks really, really great. And here we've got the Gryffindor Common Room. Moving, moving a level over, we've uh, just got a little hallway with the entrance to the Room of Requirement and a little message written in blood. Temporarily skipping the Grand Staircase Tower, we'll get back to that. Here we've got the Great Hall, also looks very nice, very nice banners too. Next level over, we've got the Fence and Star Arts classroom, set up to be Lupin's class, but there is Cornish Pixies in there, and Armbridge's office. So going to the Grand Staircase Tower, I figured we'd do these two levels just in one, because they're pretty much the same. Staircases can move, they're very nice. Next up we've got Myrtle's bathroom, slash Prefix bathroom, because we've got the little mermaid there. So on this level, we've got the little gargoyle slash griffin thingy, which protects Dumbledore's office. And at the very top, we've got Dumbledore's office. If this camera is really shaky, it's because it's precariously balanced on a bunch of thin Lego bricks. But this looks very nice, and that's the top level of Hogwarts. <laughs> oh, you thought we were done? No, there's more. Get a little tiny Hagrid's hut, look great pumpkins, very pale Aragog. Getting this from the half Blood Prince, not only because there's a second cabin, but Aragog looks to be sick. Also, Wampin' Willow looks great. There's a little entrance way down the base, and this can spin, and you can throw this little calf. Nice. You also get a bunch of these boats. They can fit one microfigure each, and they will not fit in the boat house, unfortunately, though they are nice inclusion because you can recreate the scene shown on the box. You get a lot of these. These are just the students included in the set. These are tiny, just grabbing a figure from the other set, not included. Very, very small. You might have seen this piece before, but these are the students included in the set. Uh, they're quite detailed for how small they are, and they have quite a bit of life when you scatter them around Hogwarts, and you can assign names to whoever you want. And you can interpret a lot of them as named characters, or random characters. And here are the rest of the figures. 
Unfortunately, these do come packaged separately in the bag, in the bags of the Hogwarts set. And I say unfortunately because you do not get extras of these, as I had hoped you would. Because you, normally you get extras of like Ant-Man and whatnot. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And despite Hogwarts being scaled to microfigures, there are minifigures in the set. These are the founders, and and they are exclusive for now, though there's a rumour they'll come in the DTC for this year. That's not official though. We don't know. They might be different. Who knows? But these look great. I'm not going to take them apart to show you all the printing, but it's a very, very nice stand. Two of them do have alternate faces. Looks great. And knocking the best one over. Capes are the harder material, which isn't the best, but uh, for Salazar's collar, it does work better and it's more consistent. So I think that's great. So, for Diagon Alley, I'll just briefly take you through the outside. Be prepared for an uncomfortable noise. Uh, just tell you what each shop is called, and then I'll jump to the interior and go through it very fast. And later on, I will show you how you can transform this into an alleyway and modular building. We've got Olivandas, Scrupulous, Quality Credit Supplies, the entrance to the Daily Profit, Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor, Flourish and Blots, the entrance way to Nocturne Alley, and Weasley's Wizard Weezes. Which is men worth mentioning that there's a little mechanism that will allow you to raise the top hat. Fortunately, no bunny, but you can do it. And here you can see how they come apart in the half base plates. It's giving a quick spin around. But I'll take you through the interior and then we'll look at the different customization up. So, for Lavandas, looks great. Very nice detailing. Brand new one box. There's actually ones in them. Staircase can also fold in to make the whole back wall flush so you can put it up in a thin shelf. Next to it we've got Scribulus. Looks great. It's a little sparse but it's also a small shot and we never see it on the inside. Quills and a place to test out your quill. And for the next story of Ollivanders, we've got a little swivel chair, table and a shelf with a removable ladder. And the next story for Scribulus is a living quarters for the person who owns it, or at least I'm assuming that is what it is. For the first story, we've got some robes over here, Beatles bats and Hufflepuff robes. For the time being, both Hufflepuff robes and Ravenclaw robes are exclusive, though Hufflepuff robes are common in the book, and I hope Ravenclaw robes will become more common too. Story over is, of course, the entrance to the Daily Prophet. Not much here, just a stick on the wall and a crate with some newspapers. And next story up of quality quidditch supplies, there's Raymond Claw robes, brooms, a chest with a bat and two either quaffles or bludgers, you can decide, and some more robes. And for the Daily Prophet, well, there's not really a second story, but there's a cobweb where the second story would be if there was a second story. And up in the rafter of quality quidditch supplies, there are some newspapers, some boxes, and a rat, which could be scabbers. scabbers sorry. Uh, the newspapers, so this could belong to the Daily Prophet. You decide. Next module over is actually my favorite. It is Florian and Blonde and Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor. So for Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor, it actually looks really, really good. I love this flooring. It looks, I mean, it's very, very simple, but it looks great. Nice shelf with some uh, glasses and whatnot, and a counter. And for Flourish and Blots, it's very nice, we've got a little removable, well not removable, it's just loose, it's a little desk for Gilderoy Lockhart to sign his books, which are here. There's also a staircase which can come down and be folded up, of course. And when you take that staircase up, you get to the next level, which looks like this. And that book is loose, so it's just falling in the skew on mine. I actually like, I know it's a common print and this might not be on purpose, but most Hogwarts students have that book, or at least it appears in a lot of Harry Potter sets. And this would explain why it's so common when a quality quality supply sells it. It's probably a school book. That was a long-winded explanation. Very simple level, but it looks good. And it's a place for the Malfoys to stand and think they're better than everyone else. And the next story of Florian Fortescue's is, well, where I'm guessing he lives. Since it is a very comfy chair, or it looks, it looks very comfy. A nice sausage lamp and a table. A last module is Weasley's Wizard Weezes. And there's no real interior here, but over here there certainly is one, and a colourful one at that. These lamps are loose, that's why they, it's kind of askew. Uh, very nice, just decorations everywhere. You can find it from the film. Staircase looks quite nice, though it has got a lot of stickers. And there's this loose build for the little love potion stand, which is supposed to be loose, but I've just kind of laid it loosely in there. 
because it's a very empty spot in there. Second story, however, is quite difficult to see since the staircase is in the way, or at least when you're filming. But there's this balloons which can come out, and, uh, and it's a little, a little hard to put out, but it's easy to put back, really. It's just a clip. So, done with the BB-8 body piece. In the back, we can see a rack of stuff that is the inside of the torso and the man and the, 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 the man, the mascot, really. And we've got a box of more stuff. You can see boxes in the back. On the very last level, it is quite dark. I'm shining torchlight in here. But it does look quite nice, and it's very nice to have a top level. Also, here you can see the inside of that mechanism. Very, very simple. As promised, I'll show you how you can reconfigure them. Obviously, you can put them together like that in any order you want. But, oh, if we're not pulling the building apart here, you can actually put them like this. They don't connect on your thing, but you can put them like that, and that create, that forms a very nice alleyway. More realistic to how it would look. But you can also transform it into a modular. If you do that, you want to take them back to back. You want to need these two specific buildings to put together, and the other two specifically go together. You can put all of them together. And you can see my Technic pins are not entirely aligned here. That's better. You can see you have to have a Technic pin here and here. They can get a little misaligned from moving them around and whatnot. But you want to just line those up like so with the Technic hole on the other side. And they should just snap right together. And by doing that, you can see the roofs actually align very, very nicely here with these two in specific. Turning around, you can see there is a building on both sides. And so when doing that... You just connect them up like so, and then it takes a little bit to finagle them. And when doing that, you get this. Obviously, you might not want to connect it to this set in specific, but that is how the pavement looks. It's a little awkward, but I'm glad you can do it. And that's how it looks with the other buildings. It looks really, really good. These are very colourful, both of these buildings. I'm surprised how well the nocturnality thing works, because you do just walk into the Daily Prophet, but it works surprisingly well. You actually get quite a few figures in this set. I know a lot of people don't like a lot of them, but I mean, I think they're really good. Except for this Lucius Malfoy face. Check out my last video to see an alternative for that. Sorry for the plug. Here are, the, of course, the Silencio figures. You get a very, very nice stand to go with your set. These all look really, really, really great. I also quickly want to mention, just because they first came out in this set doesn't mean that you can't use them in other sets. So, for comparison, I can't fit both of these in the frame, so you're going to have to label this. I'm sorry, okay, they're really, really big sets. Minifigures. The ones that come in the Hogwarts set are really, really good. They're really cool, they're exclusive minifigures, they're really nicely printed and whatnot. I just can't justify giving it to four figures over the massive amount of great figures from Diagon Alley. Playability. Well, Hogwarts has a pretty good interior. It is micro figures, and they're kind of uh, small and fiddly and whatnot. I'm definitely giving that to Diagon Alley. I mean, there's shops, there's doors, they can go around to different shops, buy different things, there's more minifigures and whatnot. There's just, yeah, definitely Diagon Alley. Now, this playability, uh, I'm not talking about how easy they are to display, just how good they look on display. Well, Diagon Alley looks absolutely amazing. I have it up on a high shelf, it looks great. I'm determined to go and I'm going to give that to Hogwarts. It looks amazing on display. So, so impressive. Now, storage definitely goes to Diagon Alley. That can be condensed into the size of two base plates. With Hogwarts, it's such a big, unwieldy, and awkward shape, and it's so tall and whatnot. So, definitely Diagon Alley on that one. Now, for exterior. I'm going to have to give it to Hogwarts. It looks so, so nice and perfect on the outside. Diagon Alley looks amazing, don't get me wrong. It's just Hogwarts looks a lot more impressive in some weird way. Though interior, Diagon Alley definitely takes the cake. It looks splendid on the inside. So, so good. Also, since most things are to scale in there, whereas in the Hogwarts, they're not really to scale because they're so small. Don't get me wrong, I love the interior in there. It's great and all. Just not as good as Diagon Alley. Now for accessibility, both for humans and minifigures, again, go to Diagon Alley. It's just, you can reconfigure it in any way you want, and there's doors to every single shop and whatnot, and there's a lot of staircases and all sorts, and it's very open back, it's not difficult. I mean, maybe Weezy's Wizard Weezy's with the staircase in the way, but 
other than that, it's very easy to get your hands in. And for movability, I think it's kind of split. Because Hogwarts has a very, very strong Technic frame it's built on. And you can split it in two. And Diagon Alley can be split in four and whatnot. But it's just this base plate still feel a little flimsy because they can bend in the front here. Uh, so definitely Hogwarts on that one. Now which do I think is better? I'm going to have to give it to Diagon Alley. Barely, barely. Just by a little bit. But I think it's just looking at it, it feels so magical and... Oh, it can almost makes me feel warm inside. Um, but it's just barely. And that could easily boil down to the mood I'm in right now. can change from day to day. But what do you think? Leave a comment telling me what, which one you think is better. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And bye!